Okay, so there was a recent glitch discovered, uh, I guess by T3. Um, people have done it accidentally before, namely Justin in this very room. Got a weird reposition type thing on the artifact over there. Um, I just picked this room because it has an easy to skip cutscene right by the doorway, which is where I'm going to demonstrate this glitch. Essentially what it does is it allows you to input an action repeatedly during a cutscene that you can skip. Um, it acts kind of differently, or maybe I should say there's different restrictions, depending on whether the cutscene has a forced reposition or not. If it has a forced reposition, then a bunch of things come along with that, like your facing angle, whether or not you're morphed or unmorphed, and obviously your position changes. Um, this cutscene here doesn't force reposition you until the end, so if you skip it, it doesn't do it at all. Um, which means that... You can do most things on this cutscene, which is why I picked it to demonstrate. So, uh, first things first, let's show something cool. This one's with boost, so I'm just going to just morph into this cutscene so that I'm morphed at the end of it. Uh, so I want to find the frame before the cutscene starts, which would be this one. So if I press B on this frame, and then skip the cutscene on the following frame, I'll charge a boost during the cutscene and use it after the cutscene. I can also continue holding B um, and continue charging, which which is actually optimal because you want to start rolling before you release a boost to get the most speed. Um, I can also do press the A button and then skip the cutscene. I'll lay a bomb and it just so happens that uh, the cutscene skip ends before the bomb goes off so you can get hit by it. Um, you can do both actions at the same time, so you can like lay a bomb and boost. Oh, I didn't skip the cutscene. Um, which is kind of funny. You get this little, like, partial bomb jump thing. Um, you can... I can also unmorph. Which gets this weird flicker ball glitch. Um, the reason why this works, which is kind of interesting, I'm morphing into the cutscene right now. Like, if I... Um, if I play back my movie... Actually, I think I might have stood here for a while while I was explaining stuff. Okay, there, there we go. Um, I morphed into the cutscene, and then I was able to morph again. And the reason why that is is because the action you perform before the cutscene just gets carried over to during it. So even if, in your, even if you're in the middle of morphing, you can press X again and still uh, do it throughout the cutscene. You don't have to like press X uh, and morph into the cutscene. Um, I guess would be a way to put it. Um, you can also press L. So if I walk up to this cutscene without holding L, um, where does it start? It's around here. Hopefully I didn't go too far. Okay, so if I press L on this frame and then press start, I can move during the cutscene. Brief, like, it's not a lot, but you can see the... I'm sort of wiggled forward. I can do the same thing backwards. Um, which I tried going through this door, and unfortunately you still hit the dock and transition through the door. Um, nothing interesting happens with that. But yeah, you can go omnidirectionally with this, so whatever direction I'm holding when I press L to frame before skipping the cutscene, I'll go that direction. So this helps with, like, TAS stuff quite a lot. Um, you can also put on a visor, which can do some buggy stuff. Um... Except apparently... Oh, the visor one actually only does buggy stuff on cutscenes that reposition you, so I can't demonstrate that here, but T3's video where he puts on x-ray visors is one of those examples. Um, you can also change beams, which doesn't really matter too much, because like you can change beams walking into a cutscene normally. Um, like I can just walk into this, change the wave, and I'll be on wave beam. But it does matter on the ice beam and plasma beam pickups because you can't transition beams until the cutscene starts. So if you press C to the side before the cutscene starts and then press A or press start to skip it, you transition the beam sooner than you can otherwise. Um, all of this stuff is basically TAS optimization. Like there's very little usage for this non-task aside from the fun x-ray visual glitch. Um, but yeah, there's like 
every 10 minutes someone's asking about this or learning about this for the first time on the Discord. Um, and I figure, like, you could really use an explanation or at least just, like, a demonstration of, of what it is. Because um, Discord kind of is terrible for learning about anything because after five posts, the message of explanation is gone. Um, so yeah, I think I'm just trying to rack my brain real quick and make sure I didn't miss anything. You can boost, oh, you can scan stuff. Oh, and there's, there's actually two interesting things with the scan. So if I'm targeting this, something that's interesting I noticed, this might make it non-TAS viable, is that um, because when the cutscene starts, the target breaks, uh, it, that's just how cutscenes are, it acts as though I'm pressing L um, the frame before the cutscene starts for the first time. So even though I'm holding L walking into this cutscene, um, I can still do the movement tech through the cutscene if I skip the first frame. Which is kind of interesting. I also can scan through the cutscene, as you can see. Um, but if you do this with a lock-on, uh, then it it doesn't scan it, but it still lets you do the movement tech. So basically, just because I'm worried I wasn't clear there, um, if you're locked on to a target when the cutscene starts, all you have to do is skip the cutscene first frame and it will move in the direction you were holding the frame before that. If you're not targeting something, you have to press L one frame before the cutscene. If you press L two frames before the cutscene, it won't carry the input over. Um, and the reason why is because if you're targeting something and the target breaks, it acts kind of like pressing L for the first time. At, at least. That's... That's the theory that I'm going with, because it seems to be functional. Um, you can boost, you can morph and do that flicker morph ball thing. Uh, you can bomb, power bomb, start charging, even though it seems completely useless. You can fire a missile, except not really, because it doesn't seem to actually shoot anything, but it makes a sound. You can change to x-ray visor and get this weird graphical bug where the x-ray visor is on. Well, I suppose I should show it. Um, the x-ray visor will be on, but the black and white like effect won't be on, which makes it look really crazy and cool. Where's the cutscene? Did I already watch the cutscene? Hold on. Let me load this save state and then put x-ray visor on again. So yeah, this glitch. Um, it's literally just X-ray visor, but it's not black and white, and it looks very jarring and cool. Um, it, you can shoot X-ray visor things with this, like the invisible drone or Omega Pirate. It acts exactly the same, and it goes away if you morph or whatever. I think if you put the X-ray visor on again, it goes away. So yeah. Um, this glitch is pretty, pretty unimportant to non-TAS, and it doesn't seem like it can amount to anything substantial in terms of, like, low percent or game-breaking glitches, but who knows? Maybe you can do something really cool with this. Uh, for TAS, it saves time at the beam pickups, and pretty much at every cutscene, you can take a few steps in the direction you want to move afterwards, which is over the whole run probably amounts to at least like 10 or 15 seconds saved, maybe more. Um, yeah, if anyone wants to know how this glitch works, hopefully this answered the question and hopefully the wiki page can get some info from this. Anyway, thank you for watching.